Let's start from a classical field theory, in particular the action in classical field theory, which can be written like this. We have the action that um, is equal to an integral over d for x prime, and then here we have the Lagrangian density, which depends on the field phi mu of x prime, and then we have uh, the derivatives of uh, phi mu with respect to x, x mu, and it depends on x prime. So when I write x prime, I really mean x prime, uh, x prime 1, x prime 2, dot dot dot, x prime n. So these are the components. And um, at this point, we want to consider the functional derivative of the action. In particular, we want to find the minimum or in general, the maximum of a function, we take the derivative of the function with respect to a certain variable. In this case, the variables that we consider are the, the variables uh, that label the field. So we take the derivative and we denote it like this, the derivative of uh, the action with respect to the field of phi alpha of x. And we set it equal to zero. So this is a functional derivative because the field is the variable, but the field is a function of uh, the components x1, x2, xn. So this is a functional derivative. Now, we define the functional derivative in such a way that if we take the derivative of the field phi mu of x prime with respect to phi alpha of x, well, this gives us zero if uh, mu is not equal to alpha, so the 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 fields phi 1 phi 2 phi s let's say they are independent so we have a, a chronicle de delta delta alpha mu and then we have a four dimensional dirac delta x minus x prime because if x prime is not equal to x this derivative will give us zero so you can take this as some kind of definition it is not uh, mathematically rigorous because you have to be more uh, precise when you have to deal with this kind of functional derivatives in mathematics, but uh, we are going to use some intuition here. Now, I want to also take the derivative, the functional derivative, d over d alpha x, of the derivative, the partial derivative d mu, phi mu of x prime. Now, I will uh, consider this to be intuitive that we can exchange the operator d mu with this derivative operator here. This is some kind of intuition. I will not get into the technicalities here, but it is not so, let's say, difficult to, to follow the logic behind this. So here we have the partial derivative d mu, and then we have the functional derivative of phi mu of x prime with respect to phi alpha of x. Now, at this point, we can use this formula here, so here, at the end of the day, we have the Kronecker delta alpha nu, and then we have partial nu, four-dimensional direct delta x minus x prime. And now we can use uh, these formulas because we can take the derivative of the action by using the chain rule, in particular, the derivative of the action with respect to phi alpha of x can be written as integral d for x prime and then here we have, we can use the chain rule. So in particular, we can take the derivative of the Lagrangian, the Lagrangian density. And here I'm going to use the symbol, the partial derivative symbol. But at the end of the day, when it comes to intuition, we are basically taking a rate of change of a function with respect to another function. So if we label the derivative like this, or by using this symbol, I mean, the concept is still very similar without getting into the technical mathematical details. So here we have the partial derivative of uh, the Lagrangian density with respect to phi mu of x prime. And then we have uh, the functional derivative of phi mu of x prime with respect to phi alpha of x. But the Lagrangian can also depend on the derivative. So we have dl d d mu phi nu of x prime and then we have the functional derivative of d mu phi nu of x prime 
with respect to phi alpha of x. Now, if you want, instead of writing this, we could have written the this symbol instead of the partial derivative symbol. We, we could have written it like this. So we have at the end of the, at the end of the day we have some kind of functional derivative. But in some sense, we are setting this equal to the partial derivative of L with respect to phi mu. And in general, to be rigorous, here I should not put the dependence on x prime because in this case, we are really taking a partial derivative because uh, L depends on uh, the fields and the derivatives of the fields. But after we take the derivative, we evaluate it at x prime. So there are some kind of notational issues if you want and also there is some kind of technicalities which are uh, hidden under the rug here so i don't want to get into this kind of technicalities you have you can be more rigorous and you can say that it is not proper to speak in this kind of manners but i want to uncover the intuition behind this kind of mathematical symbols because at the end of the day as i said earlier this kind of notation can be misleading but it can also be powerful to understand more intuitively what's hidden behind these uh, complicated concepts. Now, at this point, we can use the formulas that um, I wrote earlier. So I have a formula for this, and I also have a formula for this, right? So I can substitute the formulas, and I can rewrite this integral like this, integral d4 x prime, and then I have partial L with respect to phi mu, delta alpha mu, delta of x minus x prime, plus dl d d mu phi mu of x prime. And then here we have delta alpha mu d mu delta of x minus x prime. Now here we are summing over nu and over, um, over mu. And here we are summing over mu. In particular, let me change uh, the two indices, nu and mu here, because uh, they are just dummy indices and uh, I can call them whatever I want. I can label them whatever I want. In particular, I want to call mu in a different manner. I want to call it nu and I want to label nu here as mu. So I want to simply change the roles of uh, these two indices. I will still get the same thing because as I said, they are dummy indices. At this point, I can also integrate this second term by parts. And when I integrate by parts, this partial derivative will appear in front of this term with a minus. There is also a boundary term when you integrate. But if you think about it, when you take the variation of the action, for example, you, you always keep the quantities on the boundary fixed. So the quantities that are on the boundary, they are fixed and they vanish when we integrate here by parts. So let me do it here. I have minus d nu, d nu, like this, and I get rid of uh, this d nu. So at this point, you can see that I can factor out of these parentheses this Kronecker delta because it appears on, on both terms. So it multiplies both terms and also the Dirac delta. So basically, I can evaluate whatever multiplies the Dirac delta at x equal to x prime. So I can uh, take it out of, of the integral and I can carry out the integration over the Dirac delta. And when I integrate the Dirac delta over um, R4, I get uh, 1. So at the end of the day, what I get here is uh, dl d phi mu minus d nu dl d d nu phi mu and uh, this multiplies delta alpha mu so if you want you can change this mu to alpha alpha here and alpha here and if you recall we have to set the, the functional derivative of the action equal to zero but what is this? Well, this is just uh, the Euler-Lagrange equation, or in particular equations, because there's more than one equation since we have this index alpha that goes from 1 to n. On the other end, we have four components, x1, x2, x3, x4, 
and each one of these fields depend on four components x1 x2 x3 x4 which is the way in which i have written the integral with the, the four dimensional differential e for x otherwise i could have written dkx if we had uh, k components of uh, space or space time 